Hello and welcome to another YPAX check-ins. I'm your host, Sean Davido, and today we're joined by Chris Davila New uh, from Comprehensive Healthcare. He's the Vice President of Kittitas in Yakima County. Thank you for joining me today, Chris. Thanks, Sean. Now, today we are talking about a new program that you guys are involved with called uh, the Handle with Care program. Um, can you explain, explain a little bit about what that program is? It's a, it's a coordination between a few, a few entities, correct? Yeah, yeah. In fact, it, it, it's really based upon what the Yakima Police Department has seen around domestic violence. They became the big driver as we looked at the impact of domestic violence here in Yakima and, and really identified how the numbers are so high that we are the second highest place in the state for the total number of domestic violence episodes. Uh, that really led to pulling together this coalition that uh, looks at what the impact of domestic violence is. And the Handle With Care project is really a big piece of that. And that the goal is to look at uh, kids that are involved in these families that experience domestic violence. So one of the things that, that we do is partner with the police department and the schools, help identify kids that have been exposed to domestic violence, and then look at what type of services they may need or may benefit from. So we're at the beginning of this and really kind of developing what the whole project is, but it's that coordination between you know, the uh, school district and comprehensive health care and the YWCA and dispute resolution center and a number of other community groups that are really involved in starting to look at the impact of domestic violence. Now this program, it, it focuses on bridging some gaps uh, to identify the children who have, who have faced these traumas. And that is your guys' area of expertise. Can you talk a little bit about that and why it's so important? One of the things that we really look at it comprehensive is bringing innovative healthcare services, specifically around trauma. Um, we look at what happens to children that are exposed to domestic violence. We talk about the impact of trauma. You know, we look at both the short-term and long-term impact. And one of the things that happens is that one of the immediate impacts we see with kids is that instead of having that energy to like go out and to be excited and do things, that the energy that they really have is really just pulled within. So they're much more about isolating. They spend less time being able to participate in school. They're kids that can be more isolated in the classrooms. They're less likely to engage with their peers. That's some of the short-term issues that we see. The long-term issues is that it starts to um, impact their development and not just the issues that we see as children, but the long-term impact it has as they grow into adults. In fact, one of the things that's interesting is that trauma is more than just a behavioral health issue. It's also a physical health issue. That individuals that are exposed to trauma early on in childhood have long-term impacts that impact them well into their adult years. Individuals with heart disease, obesity, drug addiction have higher than average number of adverse childhood events. And that's the kind of things that we wanna really focus on in this project is what we can do to impact that. And really it's the coordination between all these different groups focusing on trauma and its impact in the long, in the long run. Well, let's talk specifically about comprehensive healthcare's role. What, what, are, what role do you guys play? You've talked a little bit about it. Let's, let's dig a little deeper into where do you guys come into this equation? Yeah. So this is one thing that I'm really passionate about. Uh, one is that we have to look at it from the numbers. So just taking it from the numbers perspective, we looked at the total number of kids that were exposed to trauma in the month of September, just under this project. And based upon the total number of arrests, there were over 200 children that were exposed to domestic violence just in the month of September. That's a huge amount of kids that are being exposed to trauma. Comprehensive is really a specialist in treating and identifying trauma. So our goal is to work with the community, be able to identify individuals that experience trauma and provide support. So we've partnered with the schools. Our goal really is to, to work with the schools as the initial point, because most of these kids are young, that they're in uh, the city of Yakima, that this is a group that we can potentially identify and work with. So there's really like two different levels that we're looking at as we talk about 
this is that there are kids that there's not going to be an immediate impact on, that they're going to be fine, that having someone at the school just know that there's been some type of trauma, something that's happened in the home, the schools can follow up, make sure that they've got the resources that they need. There's other kids that have repeat episodes of trauma. And what we really want to do is be able to support those individuals that need counseling, that need that specialized service. We have a number of specialized programs that really target uh, trauma and both at the early childhood level, but also as they get older, the more that we can do that, the more that we can reduce some of the problems that go on with kids that experience trauma over and over and over. Right. Let's, I want to talk about, and we may even go back just a step uh, in this process. Sure. So the process goes, there's a traumatic event. There's a domestic violence or something The the authorities are called out. The police make a report and let the school know. And then the school monitors, they don't necessarily uh, jump into action at that point. They just monitor to see how the, the kid's doing just more of a, a heads up from the police department. And then if, if there is continued problems, then they might reach out to you and you, you could help them with those, with those children, right? Yeah, yeah, and then what's interesting is that uh, this is really based on a model that comes out of uh, Spokane, but comes and more originally comes out of areas uh, Chula Vista, California. One of the things that Spokane has done is that they've really expanded what the definition of trauma is. We've targeted specifically to domestic violence, uh, it is a huge percentage of what we see is total crimes, total violations in the, the city. What's important to understand is that if we were to focus on all the different traumas, like children being exposed to severe car accidents, homes burning down, uh, being taken out of the homes, things like that, that would really expand our definition of what trauma is. And it's part of the whole adverse childhood uh, experiences. Um, being able to understand that is really essential because then it helps us understand what level of services we need to provide. You know, if we look at it from the uh, initial impact, when the schools get the information, kids may need very little, if anything. More kids are very resilient. They can recover, they can go on, it can have very little impact, but it's the kids that experience trauma, experience issues over and over and over, and not just witnessing domestic violence, but being removed from the home, experiencing physical abuse, neglect, uh, lack of food, lack of consistent shelter, experience violence in the home, witnessing one of their family members getting removed by the police, ending up in jail, or individuals that are suicidal. All of those things repeat trauma, tends to impact an individual's ability to participate and develop in a healthy manner. And we really want to be able to identify those kids so that we can have an ability to intervene with them before problems happen. Um, one of the interesting things with this project is that we really looked at um, individuals in the past who've had uh, some of the most arrest and the most time out of school. Those individuals experience multiple, multiple traumas over and over and over. That impacted their ability to participate in school. Long term, it ended up that those individuals also ended up being arrested um, over and over by the police and other law enforcement in the community. So it's important for us to intervene early, to identify kids that really need the help, really need the services, and for us to be able to support the families too. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a preventative measure. It's, it's almost... I'm, I'm trying to think of the word. It's stopping it before the problem really gets started even. Yeah, yeah, it becomes a that. generational. I mean, it's a generational yeah. issue that we start to see is that one individual has that experience and it goes on sequentially from them into the relationships that they have long-term and the people that they interact with. So the more that we could potentially intervene, I mean, my goal is... I would love to see us be able to reach out to those families that experience that domestic violence and to be able to like provide some wraparound services as part of what we do. And we really need to develop, you know, this group and be able to like shape our intervention to really support these individuals. Absolutely. Um, community, I know this isn't necessarily a how can I get involved, how can I help type program, but what can the community do? Is there, is there things that the community can do uh, 
especially with domestic violence, I guess, just reporting it. If you yeah. are aware of it, report it, correct? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that is probably the most important. I mean, as we talk about like domestic violence, we have to remember that some of the seeds of this isn't uh, just the physical violence that goes on between intimate partners, that there are individuals that have substance abuse problems, that have mental health problems. And part of the problem is, is that in their relationships, the people that are around them are often the ones that are experiencing these issues the most. So the more that we can identify and be able to support them, offer them resources, it becomes a prevention method. So the more that we can get the community to like recognize that this is a significant issue. I mean, to me, when you look at the total numbers and that we are just behind Tacoma with a population of, you know, what, a couple million, that Yakima is the second highest number of domestic violence cases in the state is amazing. And the more that we can identify the issues, be able to support the community, this is gonna have a long-term impact that is really going to have a positive benefit to, to Yakima. Wonderful, that's all such great information and, and so educational and so important to, to our community and to our city. So yeah. I, wanna, I wanna thank you. Is there anything else? We've talked about a lot of stuff. Is there anything else that you think we need to touch on, get out to the community about this? Yeah, I think one of the, you know, there's a couple of things that are really important right now. One is we need to still consider the impact of this pandemic, that as we are not fully out of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has locked down so many of us in the community that this is one of the things that happen. We get that um, issues come up and people have difficulty being in lockdown all this time. We start to see domestic violence. We start to see an increase in overdose death. I mean, those are just some of the issues that we're dealing with right now. The more that we can create awareness of it, the better it's gonna be. And it's going to have an ongoing impact across all of those issues. Domestic violence has an impact much further than we recognize but it's only one of the symptoms of issues that we're dealing with. Addressing issues such as like substance abuse and mental health issues is really significant. And the more that we can see this as a community issue and not just as an individual issue, we're gonna be more successful. Absolutely. Um, I wanna thank you again for, for the work that you're doing and being involved with, with this program and, and getting uh, comprehensive involved in it because it's such an important and such an important part of our uh, healing process. Uh, so um, <laughs> thank you very much, Chris, for joining me today. I want to thank everyone for listening. And hopefully, like I said, if we can just recognize the problems and, and report it if, if you see it happening. So. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you all for joining us today.